As the sun sets on a warm Louisiana evening, Vic Van Allen returns home after a scenic bike ride through the woods. But as he reaches his doorstep, he's met with a gaze from his wife, Melinda, that sends shivers down his spine. Together, they share a life with their daughter, Trixie, but as they prepare to go out for the night, a dark cloud of secrets and deceit threatens to overshadow their happiness. When the babysitter, Chelsea, arrives, Melinda ignores Trixie's attempts to connect, instead scolding her for playing music. But Vic is the complete opposite, showering his daughter with love and affection. As they head to a party, Vic selects a dress for Melinda, hoping for a night of joy and celebration. However, as they mingle with friends, including Vic's buddies Grant and Jonas, Melinda catches the eye of a musician, Joel Dash. Vic watches in disbelief as they kiss outside, but when he returns to talk with his friend, Mary, she expresses her concerns about Melinda's flirtatious ways. Despite Vic's attempts to brush it off, Melinda's drunken antics at the piano only fuel the fire of suspicion. As the night takes a dark turn, Joel approaches Vic for a chat. What starts as a friendly conversation quickly spirals into a tense showdown as Joel reveals that he knows about Vic's other friend, Martin McRae. A month prior, Martin vanished without a trace, but now Joel has learned the truth behind his disappearance. With a chilling tone, Vic confesses to Joel that he was the one who took Martin's life with a hammer. Joel, shaken to his core, takes this as a direct threat to his own safety and quickly leaves the party, leaving Melinda to question what happened. As Melinda confronts Vic about the strange events of the night, he lies to her, claiming he said nothing to Joel. Despite his attempts to reconcile, Melinda sends him away to sleep in a different room, leaving Vic to reflect on the dangerous path he set himself on. The neighborhood was buzzing with rumors about Vic and his alleged threat to Joel. But little did they know, Vic and Melinda were locked in a loveless marriage with a secret arrangement. Melinda was allowed to have multiple partners, but Vic's actions were now putting a damper on her love life. When Melinda found out, she was livid and demanded that Vic apologize to Joel, who was planning on moving out that weekend. To fix the situation, Melinda invited Joel over for a tense dinner and a potential showdown between the two men. As the night progressed, the awkwardness reached new heights, and when Vic put Trixie to bed, she shocked him by revealing she didn't like Joel. As Vic descended the staircase, Melinda disappeared into the bathroom, leaving him with a crucial task, to apologize to Joel. So, Vic approached Joel with a drink in hand, ready to smooth things over. But when Joel brought up the topic of Vic's supposed apology, Vic was nonplussed. Why would I do that? Vic shrugged, I can't apologize for killing Martin McRae. I hit him with a hammer. Joel's eyes widened in shock, you actually killed Martin McRae? Vic gave a nonchalant nod, oh, look at that. Your Uber is here. But Joel was confused, I didn't order one. With a sly grin, Vic replied, I did. Let's go. The Van Allens arrived at a glittering party, eager to mingle and make new connections. It wasn't long before they met Don and Kelly Wilson, a charismatic couple that caught their eye. Don was an accomplished author, and Vic revealed that he too was a creative type, working part-time for a magazine publication company and building web pages. However, there was more to Vic's story. He had retired early due to his technological prowess, having created a drone ship that was now used in military operations. The topic of Vic's supposed killing of Martin McRae came up, but it was treated more as a joke than a serious matter. Vic and Kelly hit the dance floor, moving to the beat with effortless grace. Meanwhile, Melinda watched from the sidelines, her jealousy growing with every spin. On the ride home, she broached the subject, and the tension between them was palpable. But the jealousy quickly turned into passion, and they rushed to the bedroom to consummate their love. But their romantic moment was short-lived, as Vic received a phone call during a soccer game for Trixie. It was about a payment that Melinda had made to a piano teacher named Charlie Delisle. He trailed the talented musician to a dimly lit lounge and was spellbound by the sound of his piano. As he sat back, admiring the beautiful music, he couldn't help but take notice of Charlie's striking appearance. It wasn't long before Melinda appeared, her eyes drawn to the hypnotic rhythm of Charlie's fingers dancing across the keys. Martin McRae's body had been found, shot dead. The rumors of Vic killing him with a hammer once again circulated through the air. When Melinda stumbled home in a drunken stupor, Vic broke the devastating news to her. Determined to get to the bottom of the situation, Vic headed back to the lounge the next day, accompanied by his friend Grant. They delved into the mystery of Martin's death, their eyes peeled for any clues or whispers that could shed some light on the situation. As they discussed the events, Grant proclaimed that the rumors of Vic's involvement could finally be laid to rest. As the sun sets on a stormy night, Melinda fails to return home, leaving Vic boiling with anger and frustration. The next morning, he confronts his wife, 
trying to get her to see reason and stop her secret rendezvous with Charlie. With a mix of anger and sadness, Vic pleads with Melinda to think about the family she has with him and Trixie, and to put an end to this downward spiral. However, Melinda is not moved by Vic's words and storms off to sleep. Little does she know, the drama is far from over. The scene then shifts to a lively pool party hosted by Jonas, where Vic and Melinda join their friends to soak up the sun and make memories. As the festivities heat up, Charlie unexpectedly shows up, having been invited by Melinda. Unbeknownst to him, he is about to face off with Vic, who is lurking in the shadows. Melinda introduces Charlie as her piano teacher, with Charlie blissfully unaware of their previous encounter at Vic's lounge. As they swim and lounge by the pool, Vic watches on in disbelief as Melinda and Charlie get closer and closer. But the good times are short-lived, as the rain starts pouring down, forcing everyone to retreat indoors. Despite the downpour, Vic and Charlie are the only ones bold enough to stay in the pool. Minutes later, Vic emerges from the water, alone and soaking wet, his thoughts as murky as the sky above. As Melinda gazes out the window, she spots a shocking sight, Charlie floating lifelessly in the pool. Panic sets in as the guys race to pull him out and perform CPR, but their attempts are in vain. In a moment of carelessness, Don accidentally drops Charlie's body, causing his head to collide with the edge of the pool. It quickly becomes clear that Charlie was already gone when they found him. The police arrive at the scene and start questioning the guests, with Melinda pointing the finger directly at Vic, accusing him of killing Charlie. But Vic vehemently denies the allegations, insisting that Melinda is simply upset and looking for someone to blame. The detectives separate the two for further questioning, but without any concrete evidence, they are forced to leave without making any arrests. Back at home, Melinda falls apart, mourning the loss of yet another one of her lovers. Vic sits beside her, offering comfort and support, but the tension between them is palpable. Vic, so, where do we go from here? Vic, are you asking for a divorce? Melinda, it's not that I can't stand you, it's just the way you make me feel like I'm not good enough. Vic, I never intended to make you feel that way. If you truly believe I killed Charlie, aren't you afraid of me? Melinda, no, fear is not what I feel. Vic, then what is it? Melinda, it's love, Vic love is what I feel. I'm the reason you would do anything, even kill. Vic's world is rocked when he learns from Kelly that her husband, Don, has been spreading rumors behind his back. Deciding to confront the issue head on, Vic invites them over for a tense dinner party. During a private conversation, Vic intimidates Don and challenges him to take a lie detector test to prove his innocence in Charlie's death. Unbeknownst to Vic, Melinda joins forces with Don to hire private investigator David Rissigliani to tail Vic and gather evidence. However, Vic is one step ahead and quickly catches on to their plan, storming over to Don's house and confronting him in front of Kelly and their daughter. With proof in hand, Vic reveals that he has uncovered a transfer of funds from Don's bank account. As the pressure mounts, Vic notices Melinda rekindling her relationship with her college boyfriend, Tony Cameron. Overhearing their plans to flee to Brazil with Trixie, Vic's anger begins to boil over, reaching a dangerous level. The tension in the Van Allen household only continues to escalate as Tony steps into the picture. Melinda, who seems to be rekindling her relationship with Tony, leads him to her bedroom with a watchful Vic not far behind. But when Tony finds himself alone with Vic in the deep, dark woods, he quickly realizes that this was a dangerous mistake. With a swift blow to the head from a thrown rock, Tony tumbles down a cliff and succumbs to his injuries. Desperate to cover up his crime, Vic ties Tony's body to a rock using his belt and takes his wallet before sinking him in the water. He returns home with a smile on his face, relishing in his dark deed. But as the days go by and Tony stops answering Melinda's calls, she begins to open up more to Vic, unaware of the evil lurking within him. Vic's anxiety reaches a boiling point when Trixie comes dangerously close to discovering Tony's lifeless body near the water. On the drive back, Melinda realizes she's forgotten her scarf and heads back to retrieve it. Meanwhile, Vic takes it upon himself to dispose of Tony's body, but his plan takes a drastic turn when Melinda finds Tony's wallet and Don comes upon the scene. In a panic, Don flees, but Vic is relentless in his pursuit, chasing him on his bike through the forest. As Don frantically texts his wife, he fails to stay focused on the road, leading him to swerve and ultimately crash down a hill, where he meets his demise. When Vic returns home, eerie feeling comes over him as Melinda reveals she saw Tony. As the movie draws to an end, Melinda is seen burning Tony's ID, erasing all evidence of their dark deeds.